Today, we are going to talk about what will happen if you start consuming honey every day for 30 days. Will you really become healthier or will you rather harm yourself? Honey is often presented as a miracle cure for many diseases, but is it really true? In this video, I will debunk many myths about honey and give you interesting facts that you have never heard before. If you want to become a master of your health, put a like and we'll get started. In today's world, we are all looking for quick ways to learn because of our busyness. And a tool called artificial intelligence, AI, has emerged that I like and use. But I also want you to understand its limitations. I used AI to create a summary of this honey video. My goal was to get a summary of what the AI claims and what it knows about honey. And in this review, the AI informed me that honey can be used to prevent botulism in infants, even though it can actually cause botulism in infants. If you're a quick information seeker, you may accept this as true, but it's important to realize that even one word can change the meaning and lead to serious consequences. So I encourage you to take the time to really understand how your body works. This is why I make my video so detailed, because a superficial understanding can be dangerous. Another aspect is the artificial knowledge in artificial intelligence. The word artificial can mean something fake, not real or false. So be careful before trusting your health to only a superficial understanding or statements from non-specialists in the medical field. So, I'll start with the trivial and move smoothly to the important. Honey is very popular. It symbolizes sweetness and has been part of our culture for thousands of years. It used to be called the food of the gods. Honey was the first sweetener, as our ancestors didn't have anything so sweet except honey. They also had fruit in their diet, but honey was much sweeter. When I mention ancestors, I am referring to prehistoric people, hunters and gatherers who used honey as a sweetener. Honey is the first processed sweetener. It goes through a whole process, starting with the flower and the nectar that bees collect, ferment and concentrate to create honey. This effort by the bees deserves respect, and in our language, it has come to symbolize hard work and diligence. Did you know that to produce one pound of honey, 454 grams, Bees need to fly 2 million flowers. That means they make 2 million flights to collect enough nectar to produce 1 pound of honey. In doing so, they make a journey equivalent to circling the globe several times. When enjoying honey, it's worth keeping this in mind. One bee produces less than 1 gram of honey in its lifetime. But honey is not just a product. It is a matter of our survival because we depend on bees. They pollinate over 130 species of fruits, vegetables, and various plants. Even if you are not a proponent of fruits and vegetables, but prefer meat or processed foods, you should realize that your food may depend on bee pollination. What you eat depends largely on what bees pollinate. They pollinate about a third of all of our food. That's why we consider honey to be something like liquid gold. It is indeed valuable and very useful. However, with increasing awareness, we now know that sugar is unhealthy. What does this have to do with honey? If honey is considered healthy, yet it contains a lot of sugar, how is this possible? Here are some aspects we need to consider. As I said at the beginning, I'm going to debunk a few myths in this video, and I'm going to rely heavily on the videos I've watched, as this is typical of many honey claims you may come across. We plan to break down and determine which ones are true, which ones are false, and which ones may be somewhere in between. One claim, is that consuming honey helps improve sleep. The authors of some videos claim that honey should be consumed before bedtime. They claim that this can increase insulin levels. But I believe that this is not entirely accurate because if you are familiar with this channel, you know that we do not recommend this. It talks about the positive effects of increasing insulin levels, which they claim stimulates the production of tryptophan, which in turn turns into serotonin and then melatonin, helping you sleep. But it's not that simple. Believe me, even if you get some benefit, it's far from always worth the risk, as increased insulin levels can negatively affect the availability of tryptophan, making it less available for use. However, even if it works, you shouldn't try to gain health benefits by increasing your insulin levels with insulin spikes, because even if it works, you'll create a lot of negative consequences. So please don't try to do that. The next claim was that eating honey promotes accelerated learning and deeper relaxation. 
The alleged mechanism is that the glucose from honey is rapidly digested. Again, this causes a spike in blood sugar and a release of insulin, which is no surprise, but it's suggested that it stimulates the feeding of your neurons, relieving anxiety and other psychological disorders. These claims are pretty sure, but they're completely wrong because in hypoglycemia, a spike in blood sugar levels can indeed bring temporary relief, but then sugar levels drop quickly and you feel bad again. This fickleness causes fluctuations in mood and well-being. The real key to a stable mood and feeling good is not to eat foods that raise glucose levels, but to eat slowly digestible foods such as fats, fiber, and meat. When I first heard this, I thought, yep, that's why kids are so active after consuming large portions of sugar. Then a few more claims were offered, which we'll talk about later. They talked about honey improving gut health and helping you lose weight due to its prebiotic content, which is why it's considered healthy. In fact, most of the important components of a daily diet can be found in honey, and we'll touch on this soon. Many videos say that honey is a great source of energy, and it is recommended to consume it daily. While claiming that honey does not have the harmful properties of regular or white sugar, because it is made up of completely different types of sugars. This is a fairly common belief that needs to be understood by understanding the types of sugars found in honey. For comparison, the percentage of sugar in honey is about 82% because it contains some water, while white sugar is crystals without water, or perhaps with a little moisture from the environment. Therefore, when comparing these figures, we only consider the sugar content and adjust the data accordingly. Honey contains several different types of sugars, it is easy to remember them to better understand the structure and mechanisms of action of this product. These include sucrose, fructose, glucose, maltose, and galactose. While this may seem like a technical topic, the next time someone mentions the sugar in honey or agave, you'll have a better understanding of what they're talking about. The simplest sugar molecule is glucose, which circulates in the blood and is used to measure blood sugar levels, and the next is fructose which is very similar in structure to glucose, but is shaped like a ring of five atoms, which is why we denote it with the letter F. Both of these elements are called monosaccharides. Because honey contains one ring of sugar, it has another ring, also made up of six carbon atoms, called galactose. Although it has the same structure of six carbon atoms, it looks more like fructose, except that one of the groups attached to one of the corners is upside down. These are details that don't have to be memorized, but are important to understand. Because galactose is inverted, it acts more like fructose because it can only be processed by the liver, just like fructose. Glucose can be utilized by the body cells, while fructose and galactose are almost entirely processed by the liver. If we combine glucose with fructose, we get sucrose, a two-component sugar consisting of two rings and is a disaccharide, maltose, consisting of two glucose molecules, and sucrose are also present in honey. There are various sugars in honey, including glucose and fructose, and they all boil down to these two main components. The content of these sugars in honey is small. For example, sucrose, which is made up of half glucose and half fructose, has only 1.1 grams in it. And this is in contrast to white sugar, where sucrose is 100%. In honey, the ratio is slightly different. 49.8% fructose versus 50% in table sugar. This is interesting to consider. I can say it's close. The glucose level is 43.6 versus 50, so again very close, and the difference is the following. Honey also has maltose, which is made up of two glucose molecules, but it breaks down quickly into glucose. Thus, maltose, which is made up of two glucose molecules, is mostly converted to glucose shortly after consumption. In addition, galactose, which we have already discussed, acts more like fructose. Putting all this together, we get that adding glucose and fructose to honey yields 54% fructose and 46% glucose, given these characteristics. This means that if you remove the water from honey, it is made up of 100% sugar, just like regular sugar. Although it differs by a few percent, it is almost the same. Many also claim that honey is good for diabetics, but this depends on the glycemic index, which is around 58, compared to 60 for regular sugar. However, the price of honey can vary by a few percent depending on the source and color of the nectar, but in the end, 
once the water is removed, it remains almost 100% sugar. Now, with that in mind, let's move on to the next claim. Honey can improve gut health. This is where they're right. Fructoligosaccharides, phthas, play an important role. Phthas are formed when we bind more units of fructose, converting sucrose into fructoligosaccharides. And while we can break down sucrose, we can't break down phthas because it is fiber. It's a great food for our gut bacteria, and because of it, they can be stored longer. When we talk about fructoligosaccharides, we usually mean less than 10 units. And another name for this substance is inulin, which is extracted from chicory root. Up to 60% of chicory root is various forms of FOS, so they are often found in chicory. The number of units ranges from 2 to 60 with the shortest molecule consisting of two units and the longest molecule averaging 60 units. After processing, the portion containing less than 10 units is excreted, and it is often used as an alternative sweetener. Although it is not as sweet as sugar, it is added to a variety of foods because it is an excellent prebiotic food for gut bacteria. Inulin is not a source of calories or fructose because it cannot be broken down to fructose by bacteria. They use it themselves without raising blood fructose levels, especially if the molecules are short. Molecules with two, three or four units are quite sweet, almost like sugar, while longer ones, up to 60 units, are not so sweet anymore. Inulin can be purchased separately as a good prebiotic. Chicory root is often used as a sweetener, and if you make your own yogurt, you can feed the bacteria to help them multiply by giving them extra food that promotes them. Most lactose is found in milk, but adding a small amount of inulin can be beneficial. Fructoligosaccharides, thalsas, are great prebiotic for the gut, and honey contains a significant amount of FOS. One 21-gram tablespoon of honey contains about 5 grams of FOS, which, while not very significant, can have an impact. However, FOS can also be found in other foods, such as onions, 0.15 grams and 60 grams of onion, garlic, 0.25 grams in a couple of cloves, or rye, or 1.3 grams of pure rye without wheat flour. You shouldn't limit yourself to just one type of prebiotic fiber. Foods such as chia contain a whopping seven times the amount of fiber than the FOS in honey in one teaspoon. However, it's worth remembering that these are different types of fiber. Honey is often said to help you lose weight due to its vitamin, mineral, and healthy fat content. The report from the video emphasizes that experts believe honey contains healthy fats. It also notes that honey is a source of antioxidants and other nutrients. By visiting foodvalue.org, you can estimate the nutrient content of honey. The vitamin composition of honey can vary greatly depending on its type and origin. Nutrients. Vitamins. Here we see 0.1%. So this is the first half of the vitamins. The second half of the vitamins we have 0.001 or 0. Well, you know, I'm not very impressed. I don't think I want to trust my nutrition to that kind of content. Maybe it's the minerals they were talking about. We go to look at the minerals, and here we have calcium is 0, copper is 0.001. That's practically 0. Maybe it's all about the healthy fats. Maybe it's all about the fats and the honey that these experts were talking about. We look and we see that there are no saturated fats in honey. We see zero. And as you can see, not only is it 0% in these columns, but there's not even a trace of fat up to the third decimal place. There is no monounsaturated fat in honey. Consequently, there are no polyunsaturated fats in honey either. So from a nutritional standpoint, we can't get anything but sugar out of honey. And that's what's so scary about the public domain. I love the internet. I love that YouTube helps spread these videos, but it's also a platform for ignorant people to claim whatever they want, and when enough people repeat their claims, it all of a sudden becomes common knowledge. So in the end, is there anything good about honey? First of all, it really is a very pleasant flavor indeed. People really like sweet flavors, and if you're going to eat something sweet in moderation, honey is definitely one of the best things you can try. Secondly, even though I mentioned all the similarities to sugar, it is absolutely better than sugar in every way. Honey is a living product and it has its own characteristics, which we will talk about. Some of the health benefits of sugar are completely dead. It has no benefits or nutrients in it. So one thing we know about honey 
that can probably unofficially benefit all people is that honey has antibacterial properties. It can kill bacteria. So one of the strongest benefits is probably the reports that it can soothe a sore throat. Many parents use honey as a cough and sore throat remedy for their children, preferring it to cough drops and cough medicine. I approve of this approach. If it is possible to use natural remedies to avoid the effects of medical drugs on the body, it is worth doing so. However, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence, some of which may be the result of a heightened immune system or allergies. Some people claim that after they started consuming honey, their air allergies disappeared. Others speak of a strengthened immune system that has kept them free of colds and flu for 20 years. I tend to think there is some truth to this. However, relying on honey alone is not a good idea. People who get such anecdotal evidence probably lead generally healthy lifestyles. One possible mechanism of action of honey is that it contains polyphenols, plant compounds that act as mild plant toxins that protect plants. In small amounts, they can be both beneficial and harmful. Well, my friends, I would be interested to hear your opinions and feedback on this. Even if you share your personal stories with us, the request to leave a comment always stands. However, when doing so, it's important to keep in mind who are typically among the regular consumers of honey, especially raw honey. We believe that the approach to taking care of one's own health can vary widely, so people who include honey in their diet are likely to be living a natural lifestyle, as opposed to those who, for example, consume energy drinks and spend a lot of time playing video games. So if you share your experiences with us, please tell us about your overall approach to health and other details of your lifestyle so we can get a more complete picture. Because these people prefer more natural products, they are likely to be more active, be outdoors more often, and prefer high quality products. They don't just want honey instead of sugar, rather, they want to improve their diet overall, perhaps by eating fewer sweets and avoiding processed foods. So if you leave a comment, please mention these additional factors so we can better understand the context. If you enjoyed the video and are interested in understanding your health and how your body works, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell and turn on notifications so you don't miss important updates. More information on this topic can be found on our channel. Subscribe, give your likes and watch these helpful videos. We look forward to your comments.